thank you for joining us today for Effective Communication in the Workplace. We are excited to bring this topic, as you may or may not know, in case you didn't know, this is a three-part series because this is a very serious topic. So thank you, and thanks, Elon, for being here. Uh, everybody find the chat, just give us a shout out, maybe your favorite color, I don't know, something new, right? Like, <laughs> Um, so you are with Workplace Education Manitoba, helping people to develop essential skills needed for work, learning, and life. Many of you have heard me talk about this particular topic of effective communication and how I like to see it as the mother umbrella. <laughs> and underneath of it are all of our other leadership topics. So whether that's building trust, how to resolve conflict, giving feedback, um, social intelligence, emotional intelligence, all of this really falling under that umbrella of communication. And on our screen here, we have our WEM address. This is our head office, wem.mb.ca. And of course, we have our WEM address in the interlake is weminterlake.ca. So feel free to reach out to either of those. Our WEM Interlake address, though, will give you all of our upcoming offerings, and pretty soon we'll be able to post what we have coming up for April, May, June. Okay, so I'm pretty excited about that. We would like to express appreciation to our funders. This is why we can bring this to you at no cost through Employment and Social Development Canada and Manitoba Education and Training. This project was jointly funded through Human Resources Skills Development Canada and Entrepreneurship Training and Trade. And again, for more information, our website, wem.mb.ca. That's right, let's give those folks a pat on the back here, a big hand clap -a -roo. Now, speaking of hand claps, some of you will know this. You found the emojis just above my head. Emojis and question area, so feel free to pop questions in there if you don't want them in the chat. Of course, the chat, we live and love in the chat. So thank you. Lime Green, of course. My mom was just saying to me this morning, I've already talked to like people, have done laundry and everything. I was very productive. She's like, did you know Lime Green is my favorite color? I'm like, yes, mommy, I did. <laughs> Our vision is to provide all Manitobans access to the essential skills, knowledge, and training required to determine and pursue their goals related to learning the workplace and life. Now, hands up if you've ever had miscommunication in the workplace, in the life, <laughs> all of the things. Amy, yes, 100%. <laughs> Same Z's, and perhaps that's why it's such a, a hot topic for me. I really, I want people to feel included. I want everyone to have a voice. These are things that are so important to me. And oftentimes, when we're not having that, we're seeing this, right? Now, you may be wondering, what are those nine essential skills that we talk about? Here they are, listed out beautifully with Calibri font, reading, document use, numeracy, AKA math, writing, oral communication, working with others, creative thinking, critical thinking, computer use, and continuous learning. You are here with continuous learning, but also, but wait, there's more. These are the three that we are hitting on today in our session, as well as over the next couple of weeks. Really wanted to pull out oral communication, since it's the topic, <laughs> but also working with others, and that importance of building our trust in our teams, it's really hard to have trust if we don't have strong communication. It's really hard to have communication and have clarity if we don't have trust and to be able to work well with others. And seeing that you're here, acknowledging that continuous learning. Today's team, and actually guys, we're happy to report we are adding more to our little family in Interlake here. We have two other people that have are joining us as well. We have Paula and Kelly, which we're excited to introduce to you eventually. Um, our team today, Rochelle will be our instructor today. Our Interlake program coordinators are Leah and Mel. Mel's with the curly hair. And then of course, you're a wonderful host, Carrie. And we have a nice aerial shot of our new office. Those of you that didn't know, we moved. Last year or this year, I don't know, the pandemic has made it into five years. So we moved at some point and we are now located at 825 Main Street in Selkirk. 
that's right across from the beautiful library and we're tucked in with our friends at Red River College. Now, this email is, is an important one for you to have. <laughs> and this will be the email for our wonderful friend, Paula West.Selkirk at wham.mb.ca. So for all your ideas and concerns and all of the things, recipes you want to share, <laughs> send it out to Paula at that address listed there. So we're very, very lucky to have her joining us. Now, West Centers. We talk about this. What is a West Center? It's an acronym, in case you didn't know. Workplace Essential Skills Training Centers. We have these throughout the province. Um, Winnipeg, Winkler, Flin Flon, the Paw, Swan River. I'm just going to call it Swan because my friend's from there. She called it Swan and I want it to sound cool. But anyway, Swan River, Thompson, Brandon, Selkirk, Interlake. So although we're li located in Selkirk, we really do cover a broad area throughout the Interlake then Steinbeck and Dauphin. And so even if um, you're joining us because you're in the Interlake and you have friends that are in these other areas, let them know about us. A lot of times people are like, what's WAM? Well, we are amazing. We're here to provide uh, awesome upskilling in our West Centers. Um, a lot of the, what we've not noticed observationally, a lot of folks need help with computer skills, Excel, this sort of thing, also numeracy and writing in the workplace. These are all programs that we offer individually. Sometimes we do them as a group. So yay, from Thompson. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> we have friends from all over. It's wonderful. And so if that's of interest to you, you can contact the West Center in your location um, or shoot an email to Paula, the west.selkirk at wem.mb.ca, and she can help you out with that. But the main thing is, is to, just like we talked about in our tidbit this morning, those of you there, that were there, let's take charge of our own learning. And so if there are you or someone else you know or someone on your team that could use a little extra support, we have amazing instructors in each one of these locations. And that's why we call us Friendly Manitoba. So before we get started today and before I introduce Rochelle, I would love for us just to take a moment. We've got some polls. This is something kind of fun that we're doing. And a few questions here for you. So let's have some fun with this. All right. I recognize different communication styles and have the readiness to adapt to them. My proficiency and confidence I would rate as... And then with these polls, you'll notice there's a little circle beside the percentage. If you could go ahead and click on the one that best suits you, it's pretty confidential. So hopefully we're being totally honest with ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Two more people. Okay, let's go to our next question. Dun, da, da, da. Thanks for your patience with this, guys. Usually Rochelle's the brainwave on, on this. So. <laughs> Here we are. Our next question is, I am in tune with my own listening barriers, my proficiency and confidence I would rate as, do you know your bias? It's an important one to know, isn't it? I'd also like to see what our, our uh, colleagues would say if they could answer this for us, right? Anybody else? All right, friends, let's go to our next question. Mm -hmm. 
This is a great question. I am skilled in the use of effective and empowering questioning techniques. My proficiency and confidence I would rate as, okay, spoiler alert, if your go-to question is, what were you thinking? You're probably not scoring 99, <laughs> okay? Anybody else want to answer this one? All right. I think we have a couple more. It's kind of fun, hey guys? Like a little interactive activity for us. How about this one? I can interpret and explain body language as a communication tool. My proficiency and confidence I would rate as... Okay, wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Our very last one. Are you guys ready? It's like opening a gift. I am in tune with my own active listening skills and weaknesses. My proficiency and confidence, I would rate as, drum roll, please. Okay, thank you everyone. Now, here's the exciting thing. After our three weeks, we're gonna ask you those same questions and hopefully we will see how we can improve or what we can do differently, right? That's the exciting thing about training and learning. Now, speaking of training and learning, I wanted to just give you the goods on Rochelle. Some of you have met her, you know how fun she is, but I want to give you a little background here. Rochelle teaches from a philosophy that a little warmth can change the world. And if you've been in any session with her, you will know that this is totally true. She believes in making sure that there's a chair for everyone in the room, that we each have something unique and valuable to contribute. She has been engaged in educational settings for over 87 years. Isn't that incredible? Just kidding, 20. <laughs> Spanning early years educational settings, which I think applies really well sometimes in adult learning. What do you guys think? Um, through to university as well. So now we have hooked her in as an essential skills instructor with WAM, and we know that she's able to create those special connections with her adult learners. Then she herself, are you guys ready for this? is also a student again and is chipping away on her graduate degree in leadership. And I know I'm thankful for that as, as we're able to, to share as colleagues. Now, when she's not seen here teaching essential skills, you can find her cheering on her favorite little athletes, whether it's a hockey rink or at a baseball diamond or sipping steep tea, maybe a small addiction there, <laughs> and thinking about her next inspirational workshop. And that's, I know I've been so thankful to have Rochelle join our team and to be able to have um, someone who's as passionate as I am about, about training. And anyway, we're so thankful, Rochelle, to have you here. I'll bring you in if you could join us. And a big fat welcome to everybody to our effective communication in the workplace. Can't wait, Rochelle, teach us all the gems you have. <laughs> Everything I know, I learned from Carrie Holmes, okay? So 
There we go. Thank you, Carrie, for that very warm and gracious introduction. I sure appreciate that. So great to see some of the names here and like I'm loving it. I just want to give a shout out to Alicia and Amy because I know we've been able to do some training together. I've seen some of your names from some of our online things we've done and then Jen, great to see your name here. And I haven't connected in person with Elin in a long time, but I've only met one person before named Elin, and I think she works with seniors in Selkirk. Is that you, Elin? Are you the same person I'm thinking about that I met? Because that's super cool if that's you. And I can't wait to get to know the rest of you. Oh, so cool. You guys would love Elin. She does a very cool work right in Selkirk, um, I think at the Gordon Howard, if that's still true, I don't know, it's been a few years, <laughs> but uh, I'm not old enough to take programming there, folks, okay? <laughs> but I, I did get to meet Elin in her work there. That's so great. So one of the things um, that Amy touched on is that we sometimes, when we're not all protocol code red, shut down, can do, workplace training so if you ever want this type of workshop or even something with a different content brought right into your workplace whether that would be virtually we could do that um, by webinar or we could do it on site then really i'm old enough for it. Uh, i am coming to do programming there this is epic i just learned about the best research okay let's go so we can come right to your office and Elin, I hope that would be your office that we can come and do programming there because you guys are really fun. Um, but even across the province, we have trainers that will travel all over Manitoba. So we would certainly love to customize this for you. And you don't even have to tell your team, you know, maybe you've got a team and you're like, that particular department could really use an effective communication workshop. <laughs> You don't have to disclose why you know that about them. We will just come in and help train them. I'm super excited about this topic. I'm passionate about effective communication because guess what? I've had jobs, I've had friends, I'm married, I have children, and so I keep bumping into the topic of communication because I love working with people, especially when there's no people around, right? People are <laughs> the reason we need effective communication. So this is, a, this is not a natural skill. Some people are born with different personality traits that helps them as communicators, but nobody is born into just pure effective communication because it takes so much virtue and value work in our lives. It takes a huge dose of humility and attention intentionality and so that's what we're doing together now these three sessions are going to be really fun in the first two we're really going to work through um, the ins and outs of some of the effective communication skills and then in the third session we're going to do a little bit of assessment and teach you some ways to understand your team and some of the ways to interact so thank you for joining us show me with your emoji a thumbs up if you were able to print the workbook today and thumbs down if you don't have a print copy and you'll look at a digital copy. Okay, let's get Carrie in the chat. Start doling out the points, Carrie. We love to give out the points. So I don't know, you pick, is that a thousand points because the workbooks were printed? Amy's already got 5,000 because she was the first one to find the emoji button this morning. <laughs> Thanks for using those emojis right above the screen. That happy face emoji is your connection to be able to interact with the material. And you could even send me the angry face as I'm talking, and that would be an indicator that you have a pet peeve either with the content or with me or whatever. So it doesn't always have to be happy and thumbs up. Feel free to interact with the emoji. And then beside that, you'll notice there's also a place for a question to be entered. So you can put questions right in the chat. I'm glad a lot of you noticed the chat box already. Um, and you can also put them up top if you want them to be private between you and I or Carrie. Um, you can put them in there and then all the learners don't see those and we'll just deal with those privately as they come up. So as we go through um, our work today, Carrie already touched on some of the skills that this 
covers this type of workshop. Oral communication probably being the very first one you thought of, right? <laughs> Written communication also is involved in communication, but this is the one we think of first because whether we're corresponding digitally, over phone, or in person, this is usually the make it or break it topic, right? The people you don't like at work are the ones who you've had negative oral communication experiences with. And sadly, I just heard, I think it was in December, I was listening to a story about a workplace and you know, you can give me a crying emoji if this is your workplace, but I heard a story about a workplace where they're still like screaming and hollering and belittling and name calling. And as the person's telling me the story about what went down, I'm like, hang on a sec, you, like this just happened? Like, is this 2020, this happened then? And they're like, yeah, this happened like this week. And I was flabbergasted because so many of us have moved into a respectful workplace format that we forget that there's actually a ton of people who really could benefit from oral communication training. Of course, we use that not just when we're greeting and so on, but all the way right through group and teamwork management. So this means that our effective communication doesn't just affect our coworkers, it affects the reputation of the company because it's internal and external what we're doing and who we're impacting, especially as it relates to conflict. And we'll talk a little bit about conflict in a later session because that's just reality, is it not? <laughs> of course, Carrie also mentioned working with others. So that ability to work with other people in order to carry out our tasks. So pretty huge life skill. And this works really well and really naturally when you're in with a team who you just gel with, like the people are just like you, you just get each other, it can come naturally. Sometimes it's not as natural and maybe we've been put on a team or a project to partner with someone who just doesn't speak our language. Language. Now we see this in the workplace when we're talking about competing values, okay? So let's pretend we're in a production setting. We're in a company where there's a product being produced. Now we might be in the office and really counting and managing the budget on it. And we're concerned about meeting budget goals. That's our priority. But in the, in the factory or the assembly line or the production house, in there, it's very different. Maybe the number one priority is safety and timeline and budget falls a little further down the list. So here's where we find that working with others, whether we're engaging with them, we're the supervisor or the subordinate, or maybe they're just um, a workplace contact, not even in our actual workplace. We find that our skills really bump into each other and that's why we gotta do this. <laughs> That's why I'm committed to this. I have like a total book addiction. I just got new bookshelves and they're like full already. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Probably just gonna need to send them all away and get all new books. But our approach to life is not to assume, hey, I got it. I got it figured out. I was really good in that job. Therefore, I must be really good in this job or every other job that I set my hand to. No, there's always more to learn. Now, for some people, this is the point of discouragement. They see it as, oh, there's so much to learn. I don't even know where to start, so why even start? And yet for others, um, we choose to embed them into our regular work. So I may want to learn skills that affect my day-to-day -day activities. So why can maybe that person in production produce it faster than me? Let me learn from them on something that I'm doing in my day-to-day -day tasks and learning from coworkers. Just last week, I saw my coworker using technology in a way that I had just set up. And so I said to them, oh man, next time we're together, I want you to teach me that because I just decided that's what I have to start doing. And so, you know, I asked for training from a colleague who shall remain nameless, but her initials might be Paula. Thank you. I haven't even learned it yet and I'm thanking her. <laughs> And then, of course, what you're doing today, accessing the training that's offered wherever, right? Sometimes it's in the workplace, sometimes it's paid training, sometimes it's the free training. So it's digging around, and I love to say, you know, leaders are readers. So whether that's uh, reading and learning, 
breaking up your Netflix once in a while to just put on an educational thing, maybe hear a TED Talk or some kind of learning. You don't have to read the book with ink on a page. You know, some people are way better at audiobooks, way better at listening to talks and lectures. Whatever your zone is, own that, live in it. Splash around in the pool of how you are made. There's not a right way. The only important value is to make sure you are setting those small incremental goals for you to move along because most of us don't want to just shrivel up and stay in the same thing forever and never try anything else. And I don't just mean in the workplace, like I mean in general, right? Um, I just use the illustration of swimming, you know, swim around in the pool of who you are and own it. So how many of you know how to swim? Show me an emoji if you know how to swim and you like to swim. I love to swim. So, you know, awesome. I love it. Now, how many of you are trained lifeguards? Show me an emoji. I know we have at least one here with us. So show me your, if you're a trained lifeguard, show me that. Not a, see, we've got one lifeguard there. So interesting, right? We have an expert among us, and yet what we all have in common is at some point we learn to swim, or most of us have that in common. And if you didn't, I would love to hang out at the beach with you this summer and just teach you to swim because the beach is probably my favorite place on the planet. So um, the, the point of the swimming analogy is I'm not the world's best swimmer. But I've learned enough to save my life and I've learned enough to enjoy it. So in that regard, when we think about learning, let's take the whole, I have to be a lifeguard, I have to be able to swim across the ocean. Let's take all those unreachable goals out of it and just make it reachable. Like I just want to learn one more thing and just do one more thing. So bravo, Carrie's going to give you more points in the chat because you earn I don't even know how many points for being continuous learners and coming along on this journey with us. Now, are we the experts? We're the experts in some things, but we're not done learning. So even like you're here to, to learn with us, we are too. Carrie and I, and in the background, we also have a new colleague named Kelly, and you'll get to meet her soon too. Um, but we are in this together so that we all can explore what communication looks like. Hey, give Kelly a hello there in the chat. She's brand new to our team. We're glad she's with us. And you'll get to see her soon as one of the trainers. And today, um, we are glad to welcome Kelly. So some of our goals um, would be these things that you see here with you. But really, if I were to summarize in a nutshell, we want you to leave after these three sessions to leave empowered, that you understand more who you are, what some of your natural bents are, and then how you can grow those and use those in a, an effective way in your workplace. So here we go. We believe that effective communication skills are absolutely essential. We're talking mission critical, can't live without them. If we want to have a healthy workplace, effective communication could almost be number one. And it's probably what got you the job, right? You had to communicate at some point in the interview process or with colleagues that helped you find the position and contacts that helped you. It was your communication skills that helped open the door. So if that happened the first time, would that not be true of the next time that effective communication skills not only build a healthy workplace, but could create even future opportunities. How would you define communication? This is like such a great question because often this, we change the answers depending who we're thinking of, right? If we're thinking of personal relationships or workplace relationships or our boss versus our BFF at work, um, sometimes we define exactly what we need out of communication. But at the end of the day, what is the same? is that there's an expression or a communication of our wants, feelings, thoughts, and opinions in a manner that's clear so that we can communicate with another person. But that top section of this slide, that's only the first half. <laughs> the other half of communication is the hearing, the listening, the understanding, and we'll even touch briefly on active listening to get an understanding of how 
the communication piece isn't just when someone just says it. In the example of oral communication, it's not just when you say it. It has not yet been communicated. It's when the other half of the equation happens. The other person not only hears it, but has an understanding of what was actually said. Now, in a written communication example, it's not communicated when you fire off the email. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm breaking the bad news. Like if I had the emoji buttons, I'd give you the crying emoji right now. Because <laughs> that's usually when we want it done, right? When we fire off the email. But that's really only the first 50% of the equation. The other half of the whole communication concept and whether it's effective or not is whether the recipient had the ability to listen and understand what was communicated. So are there any benefits of communication in the workplace. Go ahead and take a second and jot some of your ideas down on page two of your workbook. Name one or two benefits of effective communication in the workplace, brainstorm it up for a second, and then pop one in the chat for us of what you think one of the benefits are of effective communication. I'm going to enjoy my addiction that Carrie called me out on. Awesome input. Karen, you're right. Sharing of information cannot, like, we just can't even dig into all of what that means, right? Because that impacts so many things, safety even. Felicia, I love your comment about empowerment. Oh, that's so rich. And that's something we're going to touch on in a later session too, is that when we really can create empowerment and value among our team, we get such different results and effective communication comes easily. And Amy, right on the money, make sure there's no misunderstanding. And it's so true. Oh, it, that's maybe the worst part of work. <laughs> it's not the working. It's the misunderstanding. So absolutely, yeah. And and Corrine, what do you have? Oh, efficiency, yes. And that's not just like learning from each other, but it's that analytical thinking and improving systems, right? So absolutely, being able to communicate on that is key. And Sarah, you must have experienced this. If you can say that effective communication builds trust, I'm sure you've experienced it either for the good or to the negative side, right? That we've learned good communication, just trust skyrockets, doesn't it? Innovation. Oh, Dana, you're reading my mail. I'm so on the innovation scene, right? When we have that trust and effectiveness in our communication, we want to do more and we're capable of doing more because we can collaborate and relationship building you guys this is awesome okay i'm gonna just turn my camera off and you all are gonna teach because i'm so excited about what you're sharing okay <laughs> i guess i i guess i can't do that <laughs> well you you all nailed it and i have a few more that you can feel free to jot into your workbook too um that improving of relationships of course we're looking at every level of relationship right they're so complex and they're so different in our workplaces, that increase in productivity and that touches on the innovation that Dana mentioned um, and the efficiency that Corinne mentioned because those things affect productivity or affect the bottom line, right? Creating a positive workplace environment. Like, let's see an emoji if you like going to work. And actually, we're going to split this up. Don't emoji me yet. We're going to split this up into two questions. So. First emoji, I want to see a happy or a thumbs up or something positive emoji if you like your actual tasks. I'm not talking people, just the actual work you have to do. Do you love the tasks, the work, the paperwork, all of that? Love it. So lots of positive fits, right? That you might be in the right kind of job. Now, how many would leave that task that you love? if you hated the people you work with. <laughs> so thumbs down, negative emoji, if it gives you bad feelings and you think, I could give up the work I do just 
so I didn't have to be with horrible people. And here's the thing, we all, oh my gosh, this is like unanimous, right? This is a shared understanding we have that people often don't leave because of the tasks, they leave because of the people. So effective communication affects so many things. Now we live in two worlds, when we're the, the speaker or the giver or the sharer of communication. We live in the yellow bubble, the world of this is what I mean, and this is what I think I'm saying. And way over to the side is the hearer's reality. They're living in the blue bubble, and they have a perception of what was meant or intended to be communicated. And somewhere in the middle is that shared space of what we've actually said and what we've said maybe even through things that aren't words. In that shared space is where we find intention and perception can get sorted out. And this gets really easy. That green bubble gets really tiny in a high trust environment. Um, and it gets sort of expanded in a low trust environment. So one example I like to share about intention and perception is that I've been banned from playing games with my best friend. I have a cousin and she's my bestie in life. And when we're at family gatherings, her and I aren't allowed to play the games. Like, we can't be on the same team. They always split us up because we found that our shared space is super tiny. There's hardly any green, and our bubbles are just right beside each other. So we could be playing a game like Pictionary where we have to draw, and maybe I've just, like, drawn a circle, and I just, like, look in her eyes, and she's like, it's a tire. And people are like, that's impossible. How did you do that? <laughs> So we've been banned from being on the same team. I love that Carrie has a, a friend like that too. And that only happens from practice, right? It's we know our verbal messages and we know our nonverbal messages. And you know that something that looks like a cup of coffee is actually a dinosaur when, you're, when your shared space person gets it. So we can shrink that space and come into a quicker, and more effective understanding when we really own what's in the middle, that our verbal and nonverbal really matters. So I love to say it's not communicated when you say it. It's only communicated when the other person gets it. So all the onus is on you. I'm sorry to say, I don't know if there's like an emoji of disappointment, but <laughs> that's the reality facts. Folks, it's not communicated until they get it. Oh, Felicia, I have like all the good feelings that you have a coworker who you can do that with. Now, here's a book I'll probably refer to 20 billion times, uh, but great book, Fierce Conversations by Susan Scott. And I love what she talks about um, dealing with mistakes, tough issues, failures, and having all the tough conversations because she unrolls what communication really is. She says that in any situation, the person who can most accurately describe reality without laying blame emerges as the actual leader. So they might not be <laughs> in a position of leadership, but the real le leader in a conversation, in a dialogue, is the one who can describe reality without the defenses and pretenses and blame. So take a look at yourself in this situation. Are you, are you quick to blame? in communication experiences that happen? Or are you one who's quick to just assess where are we at? I had a real life example of this happen to me just yesterday. A friend, actually a colleague from another company that I work with, they texted me um, someone's feedback and the feedback had like quotations around certain words and, and it was really dramatic and, and it was hard not to take that personally my coworker was saying. And I gave it some time and I read it and I said, you know, given all the things I know about the person who communicated with you, here's what I think they're really trying to say. And so it's being able to separate ourselves out of the emotion and the blame laying and come into a place of getting to the core of what the real message is. Now to do that, we face all kinds of barriers in the workplace. You could only imagine what they all are because how many of you have lived it? I've lived it, not just because people I have worked with in the past did it to me, but because I did it too. <laughs> so we've all been guilty, right? Let whoever has never done this be the first one to throw the stone. 
<laughs> Jot these down in your workbook on page two. These are some of the barriers, and I really, really want to highlight the first one. If there's only one that you can write down, please write down the first one. <laughs> Because often we're using the wrong channel for the type of communication we want. So maybe we want to fire off an email because it's easy to do and so on, but maybe it's not really an email scenario. Maybe that's a phone call or a face-to-face -face and so on. So one of the barriers would be knowing, am I picking the right channel? Or, um, you know, is anyone here, do you have a life partner that you're doing life with? I'm sure we've learned about timing. <laughs> There's times to bring things up and there's times to not do that. So when you're running out of the house in a hurry, probably a bad time for a serious conversation, etc. So as you go down the list, you can see that these things affect every level of relationship, but especially in a workplace. So when we think about a message we've received or a message we're sending, we're considering that maybe it's more than just what we say. Perhaps, is it possible that maybe there's more to our communication than just the words that we've put out there? You can jot these in your notebook. There is a place where you can take note of this particular workplace survey about communication. Staggering, sobering, troubling. <laughs> Only 7% of communication is your actual words. So even in what I'm sharing with you today, you know, I have my camera on. You could see, you know, I'm talking with my hands and I'm I'm doing whatever I'm doing, and you can hear inflection in my voice. Really, only seven percent of what you're gathering out of the workshop today is just going to be my words alone. You're going to read into tone and body language, and if I said. Um, Let's, let's pick on Carrie, you know, she put in our comment here, brilliant, it's not communicated. She requotes something and I said, well, I, I could use my tone to have fun with that. Oh, brilliant, mm-hmm, sure, okay, a brilliant. You can just change so much with tone, body language, and eye roll, right? So we see that actually repeating a word <laughs> is the tiniest part, the bigger part are the other pieces on tone and body language. And man, Dana, don't you just feel sometimes like pandemic communication has you in handcuffs because so much of what we need is the interpersonal. And that's an actual need. I've been just studying up on um, some research on how that affects people mentally and in production and so on. And it is absolutely real that the isolation and the move to digital um, does create a lot of barriers that that are a whole new thing and I imagine this this type of result on percentages would even change with that in mind so our goal is <laughs> right <laughs> our goal is to create alignment through all the things through our words our tone our body language our actions to make sure that our behavior matches our thoughts and intentions I have lots of examples about this um, because I'm a little bit of a customer service geek. Actually, we have a customer service workshop coming up in February if anyone wants to come. <laughs> it's for four sessions of training with Carrie and I, and it's not um, customer service like only if you're a cashier. It's actually thinking about um, all those people skills of interacting with the public and with um, your network of workplace colleagues. So anyway, that's a thing that's coming up in February. And the real goal is to say, how do I create a system of behavior and a habit of behavior that really aligns with my thoughts and intentions? Because maybe it's possible I could send a wrong message. I might not intend to offend you, but my behavior might offend you. Guilty like, you know, I should get minus 10,000 points. And one, one of the things is I actually live um, in a very small town in the country. And so everyone knows what car everyone drives. Are there any emojis of, do any of you live like that where all the neighbors, all the people, they know who's in what car? <laughs> okay, so you can relate. So this is my reality. All of my people around me know who's coming down the road. But like I live in another 
altered reality that when I get into my car, I'm suddenly in like an awesome bubble, especially if I'm alone, <laughs> that nothing else is happening other than just me in my car listening to my podcast. <laughs> so I have a seriously angry resting face. And it's like my resting face is really not friendly. It's so serious. And so I'm driving along and I'm always like so serious and I do not notice the cars going by me. And it literally could be my next door neighbor whose car I know. And I just, I just see that a car's going by. <laughs> so my intention would never be to ignore them or not reciprocate with the, on the steering wheel. You know, that's never my intention, but my behavior is saying something totally different as is the behavior um, on my face and so on. So when we're communicating with others, it's recognizing there has to be a congruence between what we actually do and what we think we're doing. And it's never enough to say, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to communicate that unless I, unless it's me driving and it's okay for me to say, I didn't mean to communicate that. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I've driven past anybody in this webinar and I've ignored you on the road, it's totally not intentional. Please accept my apology. I'm working on it. Life goals. When we give out the message, it's possible that our attentions just misalign a bit. So, you know, a really extreme, a little bit unrealistic example for the workplace would be, what were you thinking? Really, our intent was to say, I want to actually know how this happened and how we can fix it. Um, but our message sent out a very polarizing statement that made someone feel like you're an idiot, you should stop talking to me now. So we can definitely erode productivity when we're creating those kind of barriers. Now here's the tricky thing. Not everybody says you're an idiot and what were you thinking? Is there a way that we can create fear in a passive way? Think on this, jot it down at the bottom of page four. There must have been a time when someone asked you a passive or direct question that created fear. What did that look like? Maybe a higher up came and said, I've rewritten the policy on this. So here's how you need to do your reporting now. Because I just rewrote the policy. Now maybe we needed to redo the policy. <laughs> but is it possible that in doing a revamp, we created some kind of message of distrust or maybe even disgust. Jot your question down on page four. I'm not gonna ask you to share those publicly because that's going to probably embarrass your workplace. <laughs> so I wouldn't do that to you. But think of it this way. There's also a time that we could be sending the wrong behavior in writing. So here on this slide, oh, I lost the first slide for it, but here, look at the top. We could be sending the wrong message when our intentions are misaligned with our behavior. Then look down. We could be sending the wrong message when our intentions are misaligned with our behavior. So even in writing, we want to think about our intentions and what actually happens. So why do we ask good questions? There's room on your page four for this. If you want to jot down, we want to check for understanding. Number one, find out what do they already know? Do we have shared understanding coming into this conversation? Number three, do we dig deeper and resolve issues through it? Aha. And number four, can we personalize the message? Because not all the work I do is done with the same tools. Sometimes I need to use different tools that personalize the message. And you know this if you worked with younger children, right? You can get to the same goal of finding out information, but you're asking simple, direct, patient questions at their level. So we can personalize the message depending on the learner. Now there are questions that you ask at work. You know, something like, how's your day? <laughs> but if we think about actually exploring a bit differently, this is an exercise I want you to do after we finish our meeting here today.
So you're going to take some time on page four and think, what do I actually need to ask people for? Maybe you routinely are asking for systems checks and deadlines and so on. And then you can think about, are they actually open-ended questions? And we're going to touch on this in a moment, just being able to assess those questions on page four that we write out about what we ask in the workplace. So what's an open-ended question? Ah, I just asked one. Where's the applause emoji? What is an open-ended question? <laughs> is that an open-ended question? No, that one wasn't. That was a trick answer, my second one. <laughs> An open-ended question means someone can't just grunt out yes or no when you ask the question. It really is to try to harvest as much information as you can get and give the other person a chance to be able to communicate. So often open-ended questions start with these words. These are great tools. These are the tools you want to jot down if you want to think about asking open-ended questions. When are you planning to meet with us about da, da 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 and oh, do I have an example? I sure do. I'm glad you asked. Let me give you some tools right here. Open-ended questions. These are some practical examples that you could adopt into your workplace. So depending if you focus on customer service or you're more report writing and so on, let's jump right to the bottom of this slide and start with tell me about your experience and good job Felicia that's an open-ended question that you asked and that's brilliant so tell me about your experience that's not even a question but it's a thought-provoking statement that takes the microphone away from you and passes it to the other person so if we get that visual open-ended means I'm taking the mic and I'm putting it into your hands so that you can do more than grunt yes or no. <laughs> so jot some of these down um, because these are powerful open-ended questions. I love the question, what things can we approve, improve on? And even what things can you improve on? That's not always saying someone's doing something wrong and they need to improve. Sometimes that's about a talent. And as you build trust in your team, you start to discover, hey, there's something you can improve on that I totally can't. I don't have that skill. So what could you do that helps improve this whole process? And identifying top priorities, how people enjoyed something, how they interacted with material. These are good open-ended questions that you can steal and take away. In contrast, doesn't this picture say it all? Closed-ended questions can feel a lot like you're being interrogated. It's like, why did you do that? When did you do that? Do you like this? Do you not like this? Where did you go? What time did you leave? Those are closed-ended questions that allow a real short, specific answer that doesn't produce a lot of dialogue in between. Now, they're not always bad, so here's the thing. <laughs> you have to recognize when do I need the open-ended question for a certain purpose and when do I need a closed-ended question for a certain purpose? So here's a great slide of understanding why we might want differences. An open-ended question means you're not just getting a yes or no answer out of it. A closed-ended question gives you this position where you can get a short specific answer in a way that keeps the conversation focused. So often this might be um, how to open up a meeting or get to a really tough issue, even call something to a vote. You want to ask a closed-ended question that helps everyone contribute, but it's mindful of the time and the opportunities for contribution. So here we get to compare effective open-ended and closed-ended. That would be for different reasons, right? Tell me about the group's history with this type of program. Great open-ended question, and I hope you have time for that answer. <laughs> and in this realm of hospitality, with hotels being the example, I'm asking something like, what budget did you have in mind for the program that you're considering doing, you know, with a group booking, let's say. Helping the people give you all the information so you can come up with a solution for them. Effective closed-ended questions would be something like, do you have a budget? That's a yes or no. Some chatty people might say, yes, it's $10,000. Other people might just say, yes. 
and then you're found you're digging and digging and digging so decide maybe you need closed-ended ones because you need a direct quick answer especially in an emergency closed-ended questions are powerful <laughs> um, but they don't really empower people so when you're talking about communication recognize with your team and your colleagues and your customers that you really want strategy because you do want to empower people to be able to contribute. Now, empowerment comes not just in creating trust, but in creating trust through the right questions. So what are you conveying? Does the question convey respect? Does it help build trust? On page six, you can jot these in that it's the conveyment of trust, or it's the conveyment of respect. It's the building of trust. It's helping people feel safe. And it's providing the long-term value by helping employees along in the relationship. So what would empowering questions be like that are different from disempowering? Well, disempowering questions make you feel like this. And how many have felt like this at some point with disempowering questions? I have. Show me the emojis, because we've all experienced this, right? Disempowering questions give you this feeling, like, I just want to run and hide. I want to go eat my lunch in my car and not be around anyone. <laughs> so recognizing, you know, how we ask the question, our intention might not be to focus on blame. Our intention might not be to strip people of power. But are we aligned with what we think we're asking the person? So give yourself an opportunity to take this in. Disempowering would be, why are you behind? Empowering might be, let's look at where you're at and see where we can go. What's the problem? What's your problem? Didn't you know this? Don't you know? Cross that off of your vocabulary list and move into the, what kind of supports are available that I can help you with? Neutral zone can be that sometimes disempowering questions seem neutral as in passive aggressive <laughs> and there is a bit of a fine line between empowering and disempowering. So a lot of this gets covered in the trust you have in the relationship and with who you're communicating with. Um, but you sort of need to go through this checklist on, hey, what's the context? If I'm the position of authority, that's already going to scare someone more than if I'm not in that position. And is it 4.30 on a Friday and they want to go home? Or is it 8 a.m. on a Monday? So recognizing all kinds of variables in what we're trying to communicate. And Carrie is a big proponent, proponent of this concept, that curiosity is the foundation of learning. I bet she'd even say it's the foundation of everything that when we're curious and say, is it possible or help me to understand or I just want to clarify, um, those have a very, create a very different environment than more pointed aspects. So in your own questions that you're going to write out on page four about the workplace, write out practical ones that you find yourself saying, that you find yourself needing. And then you assess them in the concept of open and closed and empowering or disempowering. And, and be honest, because it might be a reality that some of us find it easier with some colleagues than others to be able to be empowering. Making sure we understand the message. We're going to camp out on this a little bit next time about what active listening looks like and feels like and I have a great story for you. I have a little book I'm going to read from uh, with a great story about how questions can help empower people and how understanding can help liberate a workplace. So we were excited to get into that and to get it right. And when we think about clarifying our words and, and confirming what we've said and echoing it back, it actually gives everybody equal footing, equal standing in the workplace, as it were. So yeah, don't miss story time next week. It's going to be good. And we're going to talk about listening barriers, respectful communication. But before you totally leave your computer, it's lunchtime. I have a great sandwich that my daughter made for me. I can't wait. But before you do that, before you have lunch, I am asking you, please could you send us an email? 
we would like to hear about your top three. It's okay if you only have two, or it's okay if you have 13. <laughs> Shoot us an email with some listening and or communication barriers in your workplace. Now, I'm going to give you a free answer. I was in a workplace where the noise is really, really loud, so they literally have the listening barrier that you can't hear anything over all the background noise. <laughs> so really, your physical space could be a barrier. Um, but there could be process issues, communication, people issues. We don't want all the dirt. We're not going to do anything with the dirt. It's not to expose anybody or to embarrass anybody, and it will be private. But please share with us what those barriers are, because what we're looking for is a shared experience to understand what's the reality in the Manitoba workforce. What is the reality out there, and what are you facing? So if you could go ahead and grab my email address there and copy that down and send us those barriers. We are going to dig into those a bit next session. Now we do have one question from a learner, so I'd like to put that up for us here. Um, okay, I see one of the questions is just about um, a copy of the slideshow, I think. And unfortunately, Corrine, I'd love to say yes, but I don't own it. Workplace Education Manitoba owns it. <laughs> And they don't permit us to do that. So our time together with workbooks is certainly something you can have. Um, but then in terms of the other digital content, it's actually not owned by us. So we will um, leave it in their good hands. So how about a final emoji if you can't wait for lunch and you promise that you'll send us a great email because I love emails from you type of people. You guys are the reason Carrie and I get up in the work, get up in the morning and love our jobs. So thank you so much for being with us today. I wish you well. Have an awesome Tuesday. I hope the sun comes out wherever you are and you get a chance to enjoy it today. Take care. We'll see you same time, same place next Tuesday. This exact link will work and you'll get a reminder link also sent to you on month on Tuesday morning. Have a great day.